The Archimedes Palimpsest is a 10th century copy of the mathematician's work. Unfortunately, in the 13th century it got turned into a prayer book. Will Noel explains how he rescued the text in this Ignite talk. Enjoy! Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only 5 minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Uh, I look after the oldest books in Baltimore. Uh, I like to advocate them because I love them. Uh, and one of them is this one. It's got some, it's got some problems, this book. Uh, but it's a very important book. It was written in the 10th century. It can t it's the only place in the world that you can see three texts by Archimedes. It's the only place where you can find floating, floating bodies in Greek, the method of mechanical theorems, and the Stomachian. It has some problems, this book, because in the 13th century, the, Archimedes t the book was taken apart. The Archimedes text was scraped off, and it was split down the middle like a newspaper. You can imagine wax stacked in a corner, completely fucked, gone. Archimedes, goodbye. Rotated 90 degrees and overwritten with a prayer book, and it's been overwritten with a prayer book until 1906. Written on parchment. You see the little angle on the right? That's the most important goat in the history of Western mathematics, because that's where Archimedes' method, Proposition 14, is uniquely found. Discovered in 1906 by Johann Ludwig Heiberg, disappeared for the whole of the 20th century, it came up for auction October the 29th, uh, 1998. And uh, I was walking to work one day and my director told me to find out who bought it and see if he'd lend it to us for exhibition. Some of you old people might remember it here, but no one's older than me. Anyway, uh, it was sold for two million. Um, I did find out the buyer. We did put it on exhibition. And for the last 10 years, I've been trying to read the bloody thing. Um, <laughs> it's been a bit of a slog and it's involved a lot of work, not least because it suffered very badly during the 20th century. Uh, this is the spine of the book. Archimedes' text is running through the spine and out the other side. The top half of that you'll see is rather white. Now that's polyvinyl acetate emulsion. That's Elmer's wood glue. So we've got to take the book apart and we've got to do it without disturbing the Archimedes' text. But that's Elmer's wood glue on pigskin before you've got to read the text, which is a bit of a problem. It took four years for Abigail Quant, the conservator at the Walters Art Museum, to take the book apart. Uh, uh, conservators work slowly. This is what I call a rare action shot. <laughs> Anyway, once she's taken it apart, we do multispectral imaging on it. We image it in 16 different wave bands of light. I don't know if you know about multispectral imaging, but you stack them all up in a band, and then you write algorithms, which are like cooking recipes, to bring out exactly what it is that you want. And you can do remarkable things with multispectral imaging. Um, and that's a before on top, a before shot on top, and an after shot in the afternoon, and then you can suddenly start reading the Archimedes text underneath. That is, if you can read 10th century Greek cursive, which I can, but, you know... <laughs> Not, not, ev not everybody can. <laughs> anyway, they're still very difficult to read these things, so this is a guy working with an image. His name is Reviel Netz. He's writing out what he can see. Uh, and he's written in the margin, question to Abigail Quant, is the tear in the middle possibly original? Because if it's, a, if it's an original tear, then he doesn't have to guess a word there. Uh, because there was no word there originally. But anyway, eventually, you know, we process these things. That's a before and after. That's the original drawing that Archimedes drew in the sand in Syracuse. 3,000 years ago, and so, you know, we process this stuff and it gets good. Now, some of the pictures are really bad. I mean, some of the pages are in really bad condition. That's what that page looked like in 1906. It's the 16th page of the Uniquely Surviving Method of Mechanical Theorems. That page, it's painted over with a Byzantine forgery. If we're gonna read that page, we have to read through the forgery. We can't do that in Baltimore. The place to do that is at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center in California. <laughs> So we took the leaf to the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center in California, which is where they found the charm quark and the tau lepton. We put it in that beam, spin it around a bit, come out, Bob's your uncle. And eventually what you get is a map of all the iron on the page. And the ink is written in iron. So you can see through the gold and find out the iron, and then you can read the Archimedes text. So we, ran, we read a lot more Archimedes text than you would otherwise find. And it, you know... And there are all sorts of things that we discovered, things about Archimedes and the role of calculus in the prehistory of calculus and conceptual things on the infinity, but I'm not going to go into that now. This is a square, and we wondered what, this, what Archimedes was doing with this square, and we think we found out what Archimedes was doing with this square. And we think, what we think was that he was determining how many ways you could recombine those bits and still make it a perfect square. Anyone want to guess the answer? 17,152 ways to recombine those bits and still make a perfect square, which makes it the earliest treatise in the history of combinatorics in Western mathematics. 
Uh, that's very important if you're playing poker. That's very important if you're designing modern computers. Uh, so it became a very, very important book. Eventually, after seven years of looking at this thing, we found out how did it hit. His name was Johannes Baronas. He did it on the 14th of April. Uh, 1239, which is about 10 years after uh, Frederick II, Stupor Mundi, had released Jerusalem from Muslim control, which is where he did this thing. So we learned a lot about imaging when we were doing this thing, and you can get it all on the internet for absolutely free, www.archimedespalimpsest.net. It's published under Creative Commons copyright, all the raw data. If you want to play with it, do better than we can, you can. Creative Commons, by the way, a very great thing. A very, very great thing. And now we're applying it to the Walters Art Museum on issue, where you can also get Gutter magazine. You can also get, you, you can also get, you can also get the Walters Art Museum's medieval manuscripts, which are absolutely sumptuous. Here are five of them. Go to my group. It's called Medieval Manuscripts on Issue, and you open up one of those groups and you get beautiful masterpieces like that. So uh, one of the wonderful things about modern technology is that Gutenberg is history, people. The press doesn't matter anymore, and manuscripts have equal say. And here we come. Thank you very much.